we got you halfway through the journey and now we're at the end of the journey but we're of obi-wan kenobi's journey but we're getting ready to start a new journey with andor and we were just talking about you know we've talked about this plenty of times how the whole star wars by disney journey has been so uneven and a lot of highs but a lot of lows too so we wanted to get you on here to give us the state of star wars but first we'll start out with your feelings on how you feel a couple of weeks out after obi-wan kenobi season one ended and oh before we start mario it's time for one of those fancy new graphics because that's right this is going to be full of spoilers <laughs> <laughs> Cool. All right. But Wayne, how are you feeling a couple of weeks out after Kenobi? I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling good? They, they redeemed themselves in my eyes on that last episode, and I guess the fifth episode. Last time we talked, you know, in the middle of the season, I kind of decided just for sanity's sake, I'm going to have to grade this on a, a Disney curve. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to put it back, you know, and compare it to, to what Lucas did. And, you know, and so I just, you know, and like you said, it was up and down. You get Mandalorian, then you get Boba Fett, then, you know, and I just decided, well, I'm just, I'm just not going to, you know, be that harsh on it. I'm going to have to dial back my expectations, but I think they nailed it on five and six especially six. I love the way it ended. They gave Obi-Wan his due. He, you know, he was no longer broken Obi-Wan. He found his strength and made his big comeback. And he did. So they redeemed themselves. They, they they've earned some uh, leeway going into Andor. Here's the thing that was crazy about that ending. The last 10 minutes of Obi-Wan Kenobi, the series felt like that was the most Star Wars you felt the entire time. Like, just, yeah. the, just the ending of those quick little... Because, you know, Lucas, you, you have all those weird time jumps, and then he has the screen wipes, and then he jumps back and forth. So jumping to Leia, and then jumping to back to Tatooine. Like, that felt like it was the most Star Wars it ever felt. Because even in the beginning, even when they were on Tatooine, like in Boba Fett, you felt like he was on Tatooine, but the... Obi-Wan scenes on Tatooine didn't feel as Tatooine-ish, if you will. And I don't know if that threw me off. If I do. And wait, I don't know if you get a kick out of this. Mario, you were here. for uh, You were still with the show. You didn't give up on it yet. Obi-Wan's boss, the angry, the angry redneck boss. Just like <laughs> we didn't know that was, a, that was ever going to be a species in this. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing, that you wouldn't have thought anything of it, and I wouldn't even have brought it up again. But he Wait, showed up at the end. Again, he came back. Angry boss is a species? Angry redneck boss, right? So there's just like a planet of angry bosses somewhere? <laughs> I don't know. It's just it was it was very confusing that they're like, we like him a lot. Let's bring him back. Like what? Why I think there was a touch I think there was a touch of hillbilly in there too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's probably better to put it there because it's just like it's just a all, all all hill planet. But anyway, I don't know. This but that last episode really did pull it together, which means, like you said, going into Andor, this is going to be, they got, like you said, some of the goodwill back because they were losing them. They lost them on Boba Fett, and then they gave him some Mandalorian episodes, and then they lost on Boba Fett again, and then they kept push and pull, push and pull. What's going to happen now, Wayne, coming? Do you think the problem is now they're not going to be focusing on what we would call legacy characters, even though we've seen Andor before in Rogue One, do you think that's going to have a positive impact that they don't have to worry about canon as much? I definitely do. They're in new territory. They can tell the story from where they want to come from instead of where the fans want to come from. And, you know, they don't have that anchor around their neck because they, they haven't shown much proclivity in and how to treat the legacy characters. They basically just tore them down. Yeah. And you know, now they're back to their characters that they created. And I think they'll, they'll handle them a lot better. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to Andor. I, I, I don't know, you know, 
exactly what it's going to be based on, but I hope they they hearken back to the the scene where he dressed her down oh, and you yes. know telling her like i've i've been you know at this i've done things you know and you just came along yes you know and i i, I want to see okay what did he go through what did what was he you know why did he dress jenner so down so hard so bad and and so passionately so i want to see where where wh- what he's basing that that whole speech on a lot of people put Rogue One as the number one Disney Star Wars movies. Do you guys agree with that? I like it a lot. I like it a lot. I don't know why it gets heat. No, I think people. I think people love it. No, I think people hate it. Rogue One. Yeah, I'm pretty sure people don't like. It. I think the major the majority of folks were not happy with it. Now I know that, like Solo has been put through the ringer where a lot of people hate it, but now there's like a a passionate group that are ready for Solo Two. And then they want to bring, you know, that actor back, you know, in Lan- in the Lando series. But I feel like the Rogue One always kind of kept a, a steady keel of love, if you will. I mean, I had no heat with it. I thought it was pretty good. I liked the way it tied into the original trilogy. Um, I thought that was a clever way to do it. They picked a good they picked a good angle, but I had no heat with it. But um I, I have I have a question for you guys, uh, since I think you guys are a little more Star Wars super fan than me. But I noticed something really strange in the Kenobi series. Um, what the hell is going on with the lightsabers? In the Kenobi series? Did you not notice the lightsabers were different? Wayne, did you notice that? I didn't. D- Everybody was lit by the lightsabers. Did you not know? Like, oh, you know, yeah. Yes. It was just a, yeah. a completely different look, look I've never seen before. Yeah, you're right. Because it, especially when the Darths, uh, when he was Anakin and Darth, they, they, a lot of times you didn't see that shadow light up on their face where you did this time. They did practical lightsabers in this one. So though they were, instead of fighting with sticks that they would paint later with, dig, you know, digitally, these were actually light up sticks. Oh, I just thought it gave it a really weird look. I don't know. It didn't work for me. <sighs> hmm. Well, I mean, I know the like the the OG trilogy was supposed to be the di- the dirty used universe, and the prequel trilogy was the new and shiny. So I don't know if they were they maybe that's what th- maybe they should have got back to that kind of dirty gritty look, and it was a little too shiny. Were they going for a dark feel since the Empire is in domination mode? Man, and you were right, because when they were on those planets, it was so freaking dark. Like, it was so dark. Like, if you have any kind of, like, 4K or LED screens where it has that, like, the glass reflection, if you're, light, if you're not watching in the dark, it's really tough to see. Yeah, Mike said, didn't they just announce the first functional lightsaber design for internal use just ahead of the pandemic? And I thought I saw that on Star Wars Theory that I feel like they did. What do you mean a functional lightsaber? A full functional lightsaber design. I don't know if that's going to be actual laser sword, but possibly. I mean, the, the tech's there. They got the tools and the talent. That's interesting. Yeah, that would be interesting. So, sorry, I'm trying to find the picture of the lightsaber. Am I the only y- y'all guys didn't think the lightsabers looked weird at all? Like I just I feel like the I thought you meant like the actual lightsabers. Are you talking about just the lighting that was kicked off the, the I don't think lightsabers? Yeah, the, everybody was lit by lightsabers. I just thought it made it look strange. They'd never done that yeah. before. Where uh, the lightsaber was actually casting light on the actors. I, I know. did know. I, mean, I I did notice when when Darth, it was the first time that you saw a red glow back on his face when he lit up his lightsaber. Yeah, there you go. I don't know. That looks, it just, it doesn't look right to me. This doesn't look like any other of the films in the series. Well, I feel like the, the closest you had to getting this again, and this might have been their choice of shooting in the dark, was some of the scenes, like right before Han was frozen in, well, well where Han, Han was frozen in the carbonite, that was probably the darkest when you got a lightsaber fight. And that's the closest we got to anything that was going to be glow in the dark. But this was just incredibly, incredibly underlit to the point. I understand they were trying to, 
And, and Mario, you know, would know better than me. If this was a story choice, I think it was the wrong choice. I think it was way too dark that it just made it harder. To I think this comes back to the limitations of shooting in that volume. Yeah. There's something about the way it operates that you can't move that fast and you can't, uh, you can't get things, you know, practically bright. You know, I mean, I wonder if it's just a style choice, though. I don't know. I don't know. They'll have uh, the... Uh... Because for the volume to work, you have to leave... It, it has to be lit enough for you to see what's going on, but also leave enough exposure for the LED wall behind you to be illuminated and get captured. So I don't know. Maybe it creates weird lighting limitations. It's definitely something that George Lucas didn't have to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so wait this is so guys this is this is hot off the presses this is not an exclusive for us but maybe you did not hear this uh we got this from our friend chris killian at uh daily distraction comic book.com where taika watiti was having a conversation with natalie portman on the set of thor and natalie portman asked so what are you going to be working on next? And he's like, oh, you know, some Star, some Star Wars thing, some Star Wars project. I'm trying to do a Taika. And then he's like, would you like to be in a Star Wars movie? Have you ever thought you should be in a Star Wars movie? He's saying this to Natalie Portman. <laughs> she was in some of them, right? She, she's freaking the mother of the chosen twins. Like, how can you not? <laughs> she's Skywalker's mother? <laughs> yeah, she's... This guy, I don't know, when I heard that, I was like, no, he's, maybe he's, he was joking with her, right? He had to be joking with, but maybe not. Maybe he's not a Star Wars nerd because he is the one that said, you know what? I'm tired of you just saying, oh, you'll like this guy. He's, Star, you know, he's Chewbacca's cousin. He wants to do new Star Wars. And the, the Mandalorian episodes that he directed were awesome. So, But then again, so were Robert Rodriguez and Deborah Chow's episodes. And they had a very unbalanced, so it might have been a writing thing. But Wayne, what would have been your reaction of like asking Natalie Portman, "Would you like to be in a Star Wars movie?" I, I he would have if she could have. Yeah, I would have been sitting there like, "Is he kidding?" I mean, <laughs> he's got to be kidding. Surely he's kidding. I mean, you know. But you know, some directors they don't like to be influenced by other people's work, and they don't go back and watch. That's you true. Know, what came before them. I mean, and not only was she in the obviously in the prequels as Queen Amidala, but arguably probably one of the best Saturday Night Live Star Wars spoofs ever based on Star Wars was the interview with Natalie Portman. Say something about the motherfucking prequels, bitch. It's like nobody's. <laughs> that's like one of some of that was like SNL Star Wars, one of the best one ever. But I don't know. Still a huge fan of Taika Waititi, and, I, and who knows? He could have been just joking around, but I just thought that was hilarious that they brought that up today. That's, that's our hot Star Wars scoop. So, But, Wayne, what do you think? And we're, you know, so we got Andor coming up in August, and then we don't have anything Star Wars related until February with the Mandalorian Season 3 drop. That is a huge dry spell. That is a big dry spell, and I feel like... And no movies, folks. No, no Star Wars movies in the queue. No. How do you? What do you think about that? Do you think that really is a, a business decision, or do you think that they're punishing fans for the reaction to the the? I think sequels? it's. I think it's corporate. I think it's corporate BS as always, man. If you work for any corporate, you know that there's always BS, and then when it, people will backpedal and go slow, and I think that's causing it to drag on. I think it has a lot to do with the reaction you know of the last jedi i think the the reaction to the last jedi has sent all everything that we're dealing with right now is in response to what happened in the last jedi i think that literally changed everything because even it, it argued that a lot of people you know wayne you being one of them that force awakens you know everybody loved it the number one grossing film of all time and everyone's like, it was just beat to beat a remake of A New Hope and whatever. But it was still not divisive. The Last Jedi became divisive to the point where it dropped in December. And I think 
that had the most to do with damaging Solo's box office than anything. That it had such a oh. negative reaction, and then six months later, you drop Solo after you just fired the two directors. So, and then, yeah. and now you had so so you had the director of the Last Jedi. He was going to get a trilogy. They pulled back on that. The two uh, showrunners from Game of Thrones were going to get a Star Wars trilogy, and then that last episode of Game of Thrones dropped, which was basically a giant turd from the sky to the point where they retroactively removed fans from that fan base so they were going to get the next sequel then they dropped that so that dropped taika was going to get his but he just got so busy that they just kept pushing it so who do they have that would even be able to pull off a star wars film and what kind of property do you have i mean again on the same art if you're star wars theory fans if you go there the original writer of Obi-Wan Kenobi is like, hey, FYI, I created Reva. I created Obi-Wan Kenobi, the show. I wrote it as a trilogy of movies, not a series. And Reva was way better in my series. And Darth Vader killed her in mine because it made more sense. So now you got even writers that are coming out and like, hey, that's not how I planned this anyway. So how could they make a film? They got so much... PR backlash that as a corporation they don't know to deal with and they don't Kathleen Kennedy's no Kevin Feige they don't even know what to do there's there's there is no Star Wars films coming I just wanted to, I want y'all to know that yeah you're not going to see a Star Wars film for five ten years maybe there's no there's no reason to make one um I mean the, oh, you're right all the backlash why not just get rid of you're going to get backlash anyway so now they're 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 carving out this system where instead of trying to get you to go see a Star Wars movie twice a year, right? They want to get you just to pay the seven eight dollars a month to have Disney Plus and watch it at home. You know, yeah. They want to get, and that's probably that's probably you know more profit because they don't have to advertise as much. They don't have to, you know, whatever send stuff out. They don't have to promote it. Um, I guess they don't make prints anymore, but I mean, you know. Either way, it just it does it bypasses theaters completely. They keep all the money. Theaters get a, like a small cut, right? It's all just goes straight into Disney's bank account. And it's just another and comma. I just think that's the decision. And you're right. I and it's just another comma cuz you're going to subscribe to Disney Plus for Star Wars and Marvel and Pixar. You have all these other stuff, so I don't know, Wayne, how does that sit with you as far as like not getting a film versus a series? I, it depends. If they're going to come back and use the legacy characters, then I don't want them to do another movie. I, I see. I didn't. I didn't like the Force Awakens. I thought they. They, you know. I thought Ray was way overpowered and completely dumped on everything that had uh, been laid down as the foundation of Jedi and how they get to where they're at. Like she was more powerful than the literal chosen one, who was born of the Force. You know, too quick. Yeah. And then and then that abomination come out, The Last Jedi. But, you know, honestly, I think they reacted bad because they blamed the the, they the blamed fans. fans. Yeah. I mean, you know, they come out and, you know, the fans are toxic. The fans are, are you know, bigots and stuff. And then uh, Kathleen Kennedy comes up and wears the shirt, you know, that says the force is female. Because everybody's, you know, complaining that Ray is overpowered and, and that they kind of punked out Poe Dameron, you know. And it's just, I, I think they, they kind of created their own monster. They did. You know, it, it, the, you know, you know, Han Solo is, you know, he's a bum. He's literally lost the mil, uh, Millennium Falcon. You yeah. know, Luke Skywalker, potentially the greatest Jedi ever. You know, he's quit and give up. He tapped out. Yeah. And, and it's just, you know, come on, you, you know, you're spitting in people's faces on that. And then when they get mad that you spit in their face, then you're going to insult them for being mad. Yeah. No way. You know, but I, I but see, I don't see how they they can't if they go like, you know, like the High Republic, you know, they go to something that that we don't the characters we don't know other than Yoda would be in there. Just treat Yoda with respect and all is well. You yeah. know, when that, you know, when they came out with the Mandalorian, it was incredible. 
they had you know awesome characters created all around them and stuff so i don't see why they can't go back to the movies but i think mario made a good point is there more money you know it you know in the streaming service i'm gonna take it even further and i'm I'm gonna just i'm just gonna put this out there jeff i'm gonna say it and go on record i don't think star wars is cinematic anymore wow oh i think that when you look at the quality of the recent shows i feel like now it's a tv show i don't know that you can you can it's it feels retro like a retro futurism you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That sort of like belongs on television. Sometimes I look at the sets on Tatooine and I feel like I'm watching Planet of the Apes or something. You know, yeah, their score work definitely reminds me of Planet of the Apes. So it's funny that you say that. But we're going to, uh, spoiler alert, later on, we're going to get talk to Mike about Stranger Things. And if you, when you really want to talk about what cinematic looks like. But so I can see what you're saying there, that it does feel like he was influenced now. Again, this probably has nothing to do with George Lucas, but the ironic part is he didn't he filmed it because he wanted to make a film, but like he was influenced by those the Saturday serials and Flash Gordons that always looked cheesy futuristic. But maybe that's not going to really fly anymore. That kind of charm isn't going to work anymore. Well, I mean, it's 40 years old, so that's the thing, right? It's well, is it more than 50? Is it Star Wars 50? Almost 50? 76 was the first one, right? Yeah. 77 so it's about five years away from 50 yeah 45 years old so it's just you know things have changed technology's changed uh we're in the future i don't know it just to me when i look at the new star wars shows i was like i don't see how this can ever be a movie again you know yeah the the the, the aesthetic has been well now that it's sort of been sort of uh watered down for tv you know i don't know yeah, to me, that's I, a I, bold I, take. I just, that is yeah, a bold take. I know, Mario, I know. And, you know I think you're onto something. I mean, you know, it's like it's not like I don't, I wouldn't want them to succeed and make something good, but I feel like maybe, maybe it's it's outlived its movie life. And if they made something, it would have to be huge and require a huge build up on Disney Plus to get it over. They're gonna have to do the Ahsoka, Anakin, Obi Wan, uh, Baby Yoda, Mandalorian. Uh, Bo Katan, Sasha Banks crossover movie. <laughs> well, that was the plan, though. That was always the plan. They were going to have all these interconnected stories. But uh, yeah, that's years away, were, right? Yeah, they were leading up to Grand Admiral Thrawn. That was this is all rumor, so there's no spoilers there. And that's what they were leading up to. So Ahsoka is going to be a little bit Obi Wan. I mean, they were on the cover. What was it? Was it the cover of Empire or Vanity Fair when they were showing the future Star Wars and they had Obi Wan? Ahsoka, they had Andor, and they had the Mandalorian. Like this is where it all lies. This is this is where the power lies, brother. They had that they were setting up to. But then again, the last time we saw an attempt at this was Netflix, and they dropped the ball. Right? They could not do it with the Marvel street level heroes. They were going to lead to each series leading to that Defenders event, and the Defenders didn't. That didn't work. Well, yeah, that I mean that had its own personal flaws. I think. Yeah. I think they really screwed up on that one because they made all the shows exactly the same and yeah. look exactly the same. So when they crossed over, it was like no big deal. Yeah. It's like, oh, you 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 shop here too. Oh, awesome. <laughs> anyway, I just feel like maybe Star Wars is no longer a movie. It's a show now. And that's just going to be the new reality. <laughs> like JJ put, there's trillions of stars and they're only going to focus on this one war. <laughs> <laughs> and which two stars won't stop fighting? <laughs> you know, to the it is to the point now, and Wayne, correct me. I mean, you're, you're, you respect, you're the human Wikipedia. You respect the canon. At this point, they have to have a storyline to say, look, we're on Tatooine a lot because... There's like a ley line in the universe where the force works specifically. And one of them happens to be on Tatooine. Sorry, we keep coming back here. It was the will of the force. <laughs> That's the truth. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty worn out on the sand. Yeah. I, I'm almost, to Ana- I, I'm not quite to Anakin level. <laughs> you know. well, I'm not going to con- comment on the coarseness, but hey, I'm, hey. I'm a little bit worn out there. And his defense, it gets everywhere. <laughs> yes and they announced that he's going to be in ahsoka yeah that's big christensen do you think that they so do you think they learned a lesson because the the unbalanced portion of this was and star wars theory put it 
perfectly. He's like, you need to blame the writers, not the actors, when something doesn't go right because the actors are just performing what has written. So you got to go to the writer and then you got to go to the showrunner. So Reva got a lot of heat because a lot of the stuff, you know, the way her story was laid out. And then when the original writer came out and spilled out how her story was going to originally be like, wow, that would have been way better. So there was some corporate meddling that happened between that and, and the poor writing. So I don't know, man. Well, it happens all the time in our, our past profession. Yeah. They have great ideas come out and Vince squashes them and goes with something corny. Oh my God. Yeah. We're, we're going to get a little, we're going to get in a little bit of that as well too. Mars like, oh, should Wayne, we have Wayne when we talk about money in the bank? I was like, we're going to need a blast shield and an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm passionate about Star Wars? Don't get me started. <laughs> but so, uh, so would you say that uh, if leading to the future of Star Wars, are you, to use one of their words, full of hope? Cautiously optimistic after the last uh, el- uh, episode of Obi Wan, um, I don't think they've mastered the art of giving somebody the rub. Somehow mm-hmm. they decided that you squash the star from the past. <laughs> but um, why? That doesn't make sense. They don't understand how rub works. I understand that they want to get their own characters over. Totally get that. But you don't get the other characters over by crapping on the characters of the past. You have you do a, not. You get a, You have a natural organic story where you actually get to see the similarities of these old characters and the new characters. And they don't even have to tie them back into being a family member. Would you have liked Rey better if she was related to Obi-Wan versus the Emperor? I kind of would have, yeah. Um, I... <laughs> I, if they'd have just got her right, if they would have just let her put in the time like we got to see with Ahsoka, I would have liked her better. I, I, I can deal with the, the I, guess, I guess just from a baby versus heel standpoint, you might be more likable being an offspring of Obi-Wan Kenobi, but I, I just, I, I will never get over how quickly she mastered force techniques that took 20 years for other Jedi that became masters. Yeah. And so I think, you know, to answer your question, yes, I guess she would have been a little more likable and you would have maybe would have pulled for her a little bit more. But, you know, the fact that, that, you know, she was in Palpatine's line, you know, that still, she, she never turned to the dark side. They teased it a little bit, but you know, you got to give her props for that. So I'm not sure that's what would have changed it for me. So Mario, I'm gonna we're gonna make a uh, we're gonna make the sequel trilogy, but we're gonna call it the Wayne Cut. And then every time they do something that doesn't make sense, we're gonna put Han Solo in there. He's gonna say, "That's not how the Force works." <laughs> exactly, because <laughs> it's true. Because you're at, I'm, and I jest, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Because I just rewatched that scene. It was on TNT. I was like, I'll put it on. And it's just like when she was trying to figure out the Jedi mind trick. And he's like, oh, he's, she's unlocking his power as we speak. And the only way that would have totally made sense if they would it was a born identity where she was already fully trained and somehow she lost her memories and then was unlocking what she'd not being raw dog like she did it. All right. Here's a quick question for you guys. The way everything goes out is going on right now in a future Star Wars property. Who gets a bigger pop for the cameo? Ray Skywalker or Jar Jar Binks? Are we going to go with Sith Lord Jar Jar Binks or just <laughs> plain old uh, Jar Jar Binks? Oh, that's a, that's a tough call. Let's just go with plain old Jar Jar. Plain Jar Jar. Who gets the bigger pop? Jar Jar for sure. Jar Jar, right? I think Jar Jar. What do you think, Wayne? That's oh man, I hate to say it. I, I think you're right. I think it's Jar Jar. I think right now the sequels are uh, the prequel trilogy is still riding this wave of love and nostalgia. Why people didn't hate Obi Wan outright because they still had pieces of greatness of the show that respected the prequel trilogy, 
and then their new stuff people really didn't care about they're like okay fine we'll just we'll discard that as long as you give us these these star wars moments at the end sidebar the the opening uh montage in episode one of kenobi is the best version of the prequels i mean the way they cut it down to 90 seconds or whatever that was that was an awesome montage yeah that that really makes them look amazing and i think that if you're you should, people should watch that on the regular man i i just i there it does yeah they got so much hate when they first came out that's like so much I have, hate. i have a question for you yeah what do you think i mean not that this is going to happen but when you mentioned that the i can Pardon me, I can't remember the actor's name who played Han Solo in Solo. Aldrin, Alden, 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 Emmerich? Alden Edric. Alden Edric. Okay, you you mentioned people were kind of, you know, warming up to him, and and you know he may make an appearance in Orlando. Is that in response to <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy blaming him? Yeah, How she is, can- <laughs> so my question is. It'll never happen, but if they were to let go of Kathleen Kennedy, what would that do for for Star Wars fans, and would it be a, a, a PR coup for them? I think so. I think it would. Be, it, it needs to be a PR coup. I just don't understand to be owned by the same company. How do you not look at what Marvel's doing and succeeding with wildly and like say, why can't we just do that over here? Oh, it's like we got Kevin Feige. The buck stops with Kevin Feige. Unfortunately, the buck stops with Vince McMahon now. And in 2001, that became a problem. But before that, the buck stopping with Vince McMahon was a great thing. And they have that with Kevin Feige. Why the buck stopping with Kathleen Kennedy is not working because she has an agenda that has nothing to do with the brand. Where and then you got somebody that's on the payroll that is a you know a padawan learner of the person that you just gave four billion dollars to that it's like yeah he taught me everything i know about that. and i respect the lore and i understand all it's like okay yeah but we'll put we'll give you something we'll find your spot like shouldn't he be running the whole show but you're right i think that is again more corporate meddling that they're going back and okay let's maybe put him in there but there's still a group of people that are saying no let's just use a deep fake harrison ford because it worked for luke it worked well for luke i don't know if, i think the luke skywalker scene in the end of mandalorian season two would have worked just as well if it was winter soldier and not a deep fake. yeah right <sighs> I don't think at all. Well, they wouldn't, no, they don't, they would. no, I don't think the fans would have gone for. It. I think there would have been division. That they would have been fighting. Really? I, I don't. I think that that is strictly a decision to please the fickle fans. And it's like you can't argue with CGI of the actual guy with the same voice, and it's completely believable. I mean, I don't know. But like you said, it was so uncanny. Like I was happy that it was him, and they were acknowledging the character, but. I felt like, oh man, I wish it was a little bit cleaner. And then they did clean it up in the next season with the Grogu training session. I think that was pretty flawless. I didn't have a lot of heat with that one. Yeah, no, that one was good. That one helped. What were you saying, Wayne? It never bothered me. CGI, you know, it's evolving. At at some point, we there'll be stars that we don't even realize are just you know, fictional characters that has a voice actor and we think they're real, you know, what Hollywood will go to cafe. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, I was listening to, you got, you know, but I, to me, either way, I mean, I think that you, you could have used, you know, winter soldier. If you have plans for the character moving forward and you're going to need an actor playing him, yeah. I think it, it also signals that, you're going to get a few cameos here and there, and they're moving on. I, I, you know, I think they're going to, especially cinematically. I think they're they're done with the Skywalker line. Yeah, I think now they're just they're again. I think they're going to they're not going to look at what really caused the division in this. They're going to miss. They're not going to read between the lines of what really 
people disliked and I think it had nothing to do with, you know, whether Sebastian Shan or CGI or using the real Han. They're just got to, they're not respecting their own lore. They're not respecting their brand that they own and the fans get passionate. And then the, their response to it is almost just as poor as the fans ripping into an actor saying, go kill yourself. You, you ruined my, job. but you know, George Lucas has to be laughing, right? Because how many people talked about how, you know, he talked about, you know, you killed my childhood, you know, George, how many times did George Lucas hear that? So he's probably like, I told you, I told you. <laughs> <laughs>